Well, for me, the best moment of the Vegas Grand Prix undoubtedly was when the top three were being chauffeured in a limo to the interview section of the proceedings at the end of the Grand Prix. And there were Max and Checo chatting amongst themselves, really, about what the car felt like after the final pit stop, which had taken place under safety car conditions when both of them went to their second set of new hard tyres. And there's Charles listening to this and suddenly turns to Max and said, so you both came in for, for new tyres at the safety car? And Max looks at him sort of, yeah, why wouldn't we? And Charles at this moment just looks out the window and you can see his brain ticking over and he's thinking another race gone you know why didn't we stop as well for new tires of course the answer is that it's very easy very easy now sitting back to say well you know another race lost to ferrari strategy but if you look at the situation at the time it was relatively complex because sergio perez had got involved in the inevitable the inevitable first corner melee in this uh, you know put, put on cold tires at a night race in vegas what's going to happen at the first tight corner there's going to be an issue and this time it was triggered by Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. Uh, Fernando always very good at first corners. He usually goes for the outside. But on this occasion, he was approaching the corner and everybody sort of breaking early on the racing line, hoping they're going to keep their grip. So Fernando just darts down the inside and inevitably locks up, spins, a very slow speed spin uh, and triggers a sort of chaos behind him. Valtteri Bottas got the worst of it in the Alpha, ended up sort of head on with Fernando, very slow speed. And also Sergio Perez got involved, Lewis got involved. Well, just front wing end plates, all the usual ridiculously annoying things. And so, Sarah, so Red Bull did the right thing at that point. They, they, obviously, Sergio had to come in for damage repair. There was a virtual safety car. He came in and they put him on to now a set of hard tyres because what he wanted then was longevity from the back of the grid. That was the only race they could do for Sergio Perez. And as it worked out, it was a very good thing for Perez because he had a lot of grip, relative grip, at that stage of the race. And he went through the field really well, looked really good in the car. And by the time it got to the point where Max and Charles, who are at the front of the race, were in the in the pit stop zone. There was Sergio Perez looking as if he was going to inherit the lead, which of course he did. And interestingly, it was Max that stopped first. He, his tyres appeared to fall off the cliff very, very quickly. He'd, he'd taken the lead at the first corner. I wouldn't say from the start. He was alongside Charles <clears throat> for a millisecond in the braking area as they went into the first corner, the tight corner, that is, left-hander. And... It was a, you could just see what Max was doing. I mean, it's a classic karting. I mean, he's got such a good racing brain, isn't he? You could see him thinking, well, I'm going to go for it here down the inside with Charles. And if I run wide, of, of course, I'm going to have a bit of understeer and it's not my fault, you know, cold tyres, everything else. And that's exactly what happened. He sort of ran wide. Well, he didn't really. I'm not sure he really did run wide. I think he just wanted to make sure Charles was never get him, going to get him. And he just eased off the steering. And Charles had no option. A bit like Lewis in 21. Uh, had no option but to ease the steering as well and go off the track uh, to avoid a collision so Max got the lead there but it was very touch and go and, and inevitably and I think correctly in this occasion uh, he got a five second penalty for that so he knew that going into the first pit stop uh, but he didn't in that first stint he didn't really show any aggression or try to get away from Charles on the contrary after about five or six laps his tires started to go away this is Max's tires right front particularly and Charles was in really good shape because, as I said yesterday, you know, the Ferrari has an inherent top speed advantage with its aero layout on the car. Forget about wing settings. And Ferrari used that really well to give them just enough top speed advantage, but to actually soak that up with some downforce for the first time in a long while, and probably since Monza. And, and they, they look really good around the lap. Yeah, of course, um, the Red Bull is just phenomenal through medium high speed corners with the amount of grip it can develop with the Adrian Newey aero efficiency of the car. But in terms of high speed braking, top speed, and just change of direction, the slow speed change of direction of the Ferrari was really good. And Charles took the lead from Max before Max's pit stop, which was quite a statement, really. And this moment, you thought, wow, you know, there's absolutely, in terms of time management, there is no way Ferrari won't really be in the hunt today, and they could well win this Grand Prix with Charles. I'll get on to Carlos Sainz in a minute. And, uh, and so it proved, you know, it, Max came in and had to, it was a 7.7 .7 pit stop because there was a five second penalty built in. So it was a quick stop, it was a 2.2 second stop. Just shows how quick you can be if the car is stationary in front of you, just zonk zonk like that, great to watch. And of course that then dropped Max down into the, the crowd if you like. And he was starting to race with the sort of guys that 
could put on a bit of a show and lead Max Verstappen for a lap or two. And he needed to be aware of that. And I think this is where Max made only his real error of the race. If you, if you discount what happened on the first lap with Leclerc, okay, he'd pay the penalty for that. It was the five second penalty. But here he was catching George Russell who is never ever going to be an easy guy to pass particularly on a circuit like Vegas with walls everywhere and and a lot of stuff coming up offline as well and I think Max made a mistake in passing George very nice pass going into a chicane where normally you wouldn't see a pass taking place and I, I've talked about this before I think he just misread George Russell because if you don't make it absolutely clear with George that he's basically lost and he's got to give up the position he's always going to be there and he's always going to he's always going to fight back and and that's exactly what happened he had he had the pass on George no doubt about that but either George was just never going to give up on that specific corner or maybe he just never thought Max was going to be there but George just stayed there and they touched and there was damage. There was certainly damage to George's car, but there was certainly damage too to the Red Bull, to the front wing. Uh, I thought it was quite good afterwards, Max saying um, we didn't touch it because if you touch it, it might break more. So we just left it as it was. And yeah, it had a bit of understeer. <sighs> Unbelievable. I mean, this I've talked before about how Max has this ability, like Lewis, like Charles, but this this was absolutely in focus today has this ability to drive around problems and yes he had understeer which is what you don't want at that circuit for sure when you're trying to look after the tires but he just made the car look superb made the car look superb in the closing phase of the race so Charles had taken the lead on lap 16 nice pass over max max's tires having fallen off the cliff at this point he then comes into the pits and and, and serves that penalty and then comes back out into the george russell mess uh, and Charles Leclerc is then left in the front of the race with nobody around him looking after the tires really well the ferrari looks like a race winning package at this point so Charles then stayed out for a further four laps and it looked good came in relatively slow stop 3.7 seconds compared with the 2.2 that max verstappen had had so already some of that lead had been eaten away again and when he rejoined it was now sergio perez who'd made that earlier stop and was now on the hard tire it was now sergio perez who was leading the grand prix so at this point you've got perez in uncharted territory in terms of Ferrari's strategy analysis, whatever's going on in the garage. What's he going to be doing? When's he going to be making his next stop? And is he a potential threat now for the race? Because he's leading the race from the back of the grid. Pretty scary from Ferrari's point of view. And then you've got Max Verstappen, who's closing and looking really, really good on a new set of hard tyres. So what do you do? Charles Leclerc is 11 seconds behind Perez. And then the safety car comes out. And it's only five laps into the new stint for Charles Leclerc. And this is the moment we're talking about in the limo. Ferrari say, no, above all, we don't know what Perez is going to be doing. We don't know how much of a threat he's going to be. We will give Charles track position now because Perez and Verstappen are coming in for new sets of tyres. So he got the track position. And at the restart, it was Charles Leclerc from Sergio Perez. And Max Verstappen had a couple of slower cars between him and Perez. So it still looked relatively good for Charles Leclerc. But nobody really knew how big a factor that five lap newness of the hard tire on the Red Bull was going to be. As it turned out, it was a big factor. And Charles' tires went off pretty quickly into that second half of the race. He, he was driving absolutely on fingertips, trying to keep the car as, as straight as possible, trying not to lean on the car in any way. But the lockups began to creep into his laps. And in the meantime, Max Verstappen was unbelievably quick in the Red Bull, albeit with the damaged front wing, but really, really good in catching them both. And Perez pulled off a beautiful pass on Charles Leclerc, a DRS pass, you've got to say, uh, on lap 32 to take the lead. And at this point, you thought, wow, Sergio Perez is going to win the Las Vegas Grand Prix from effectively the pit lane on the first lap. Brilliant drive. And there were 15 laps to go. Perez held the lead for three laps and then Charles repassed him again. It was just like, you know, did Brazil happen or not? Anyway, this was Perez being Sergio Perez, you imagine that this was the moment for him to win the Las Vegas Grand Prix, but he couldn't do it. And Charles repassed him. And Max, of course, could see all this going on in front of him. And the minute Perez lost the lead, he was right there alongside Sergio as well, showing who was boss and taking 
P2 from Sergio Perez. And then for one lap, it was Charles Leclerc versus Max Verstappen. Max was much quicker on the road. He was half a second a lap quicker, if not more. And beautiful pass on Charles Leclerc to take the lead. So it was Max from Charles Leclerc from Sergio Perez. And you thought, well, obviously Sergio's just cooked his tyres in doing whatever he was doing, the way he was driving, whatever. Uh, and another opportunity lost for him. Obviously an opportunity lost for Ferrari with Charles Leclerc. If they'd given him a new set of tyres, probably it would have been a different race. But it didn't end that way because... Sergio Perez showed quite clearly that the Red Bull was now a better car, better package, any race package than the Ferrari, because then he retook second place from Charles Leclerc when Charles' tyres went off even more. He ran wide, locked up, ran wide, and it was an easy pass for Sergio Perez back to P2 again. And you thought, well, that's OK, you know, Red Bull P2. This is the sort of drive that you expect of the, of the second driver in Red Bull if Max Verstappen's your team leader. And guess what happened? It was Brazil all over again because Charles then retook P2 on the last lap from Sergio Perez. And it was just, you just thought, I don't know what I thought, really. I just thought, yeah, I mean, Charles Leclerc is very good. And, and to do that with a car with no grip was a phenomenal pass from Charles Leclerc. And I think he got driver of the day award in the end, justifiably so. Really good drive from Charles Leclerc to finish second. But really, Sergio Perez should either have won that race or finished second, I think. Um, just extraordinary that he didn't. And a fabulous drive by, by Max Verstappen. Second half of the race, it was just like Max as normal. After all the stuff that comes really with being on this sort of circuit, I, I did a video on Friday about my thoughts on this, on the way Formula One is going with these sorts of tracks. And, and let's just talk about that now and go through some of the other placings because uh, there was a lot of sort of gushing talk afterwards about what a brilliant race this was, it emphasis on the racing all the time. Of course, there was never any doubt, there is no doubt in the world that if you build circuits with long straights, DRS, and tight corners at either end, it's always going to be great racing. That's not the point, is it? The point, of course, is where are the, where are the really good corners that, that separate the great drivers from the good drivers? And also, as the point I've been making, which is having that sort of racing on street circuits where there's nowhere to go is always playing with fire anyway. So let's just remember when all uh, with, amidst all the gushing talk about what a great race it was, let's remember that Lando Norris, a driver of no mean talent, completely lost control of his McLaren on cold tyres on a quick part of the circuit, which should have been flat out as he was approaching a braking area. Just lost the back end, had a massive shunt which ended up going for him going into the medical center. Uh, that was a function of this sort of track. And then I think we should remember also what happened to Carlos Sainz on Friday, because if the Ferrari was that good in the hands of Charles Leclerc, and if Carlos Sainz had started on the front row, he could have won this Grand Prix, you know, with slightly different strategy. Who knows what would have happened? No mention of Carlos Sainz after that race. From where he was, he inevitably had some sort of drama as well on the first corners, but he finished sixth in the end. Very good drive from Carlos Sainz to finish sixth. Uh, obviously, Ferrari on the edge in terms of time management, but if you've got two cars out there at the front, maybe, and you make a mistake with one of them, i.e. they should have brought Charles in for a new set of tyres, maybe they would have got it right on the science car and he could have won that race. He won Singapore for Pete's sake, so he could have done that. No mention of him after the race in all the gushing talk about what a great race this was. And he was in that position purely because of something ridiculous like a manhole cover destroying his car and power unit. And that should never have happened. That shouldn't happen at this level of Formula One in my view. So a big credit there for, for Carlos Sainz, I think P6. Esteban Ocon drove really well to finish P4 in the Alpine. As I said yesterday, they looked good. Uh, Pierre Gasly faded uh, in the back half of the race. There's a bit of a battle between the two, but Esteban Ocon drove really well. Uh, he didn't He didn't actually finish fourth on the road. He was beaten on the road by George Russell, who was encouraged on the radio by Toto Wolf. P4 is there for us, George. <laughs> Not taking into account that George also was going to get a penalty for that incident with Max Verstappen and, and eventually finished eighth in the classification just behind um, his teammate Lewis Hamilton, who also had a... Had a puncture as well as first lap dramas to deal with in the Mercedes. So it was a terrible day for Mercedes overall to finish in the final results seventh. Lance Stroll, very good in the Aston Martin P5. Kept his nose clean for a change. Did a good job. And Oscar Piastri, I thought, drove really well in the McLaren. I mean, it's pretty scary when your teammate, a driver of the quality of Lando, can have the sort of shunt that he had uh, for, for Oscar to stay on it. And he was. there were moments of the race when he looked really good. And at the end, when he went back to mediums, he was on. He set fastest lap. So good performance from Oscar Piastri, good comeback drive really after a couple of uh, rather disappointing outings over the last two or three races, but 
This is the Oscar Piastri we saw earlier in the season. Really, really good drive. P10, final point for him. The Williams faded, as did the Haas Delara Ferraris, as did the Alfa Romeos. So it was disappointing for them. But overall, yep, no reason why this was never going to be a good race. As we said as early as uh, FP1, FP2, it was always going to be a good race, long straights, DRS. But for me, there were some messy things about Vegas that could have been avoided had, dare I say it, had they been racing out of the desert on a beautiful purpose-built circuit and enjoying Vegas at night. Anyway, that's, I've said enough about that, so I won't go on about it. It was a good race in terms of what Liberty are going to be able to do with this Grand Prix now after the, the hiccup of Friday. It was more than a hiccup after the drama of Friday. Uh, and they can say, yeah, it was a great Grand Prix, big success, I'm sure. Uh, wouldn't want to see the balance sheet at this point of how how much money has actually been spent and underwritten but that will all come back I'm sure with the real estate values and that huge complex they have on the strip so overall yeah very good Grand Prix Max Verstappen I know it was supposed to be an Elvis thing when he got you know that whole white with the gold but I thought it was so nice to see him in white overalls just look like white or silver simpsons or henchmen's from the old days really good and the i thought the red bulls actually got to say i mean a lot of teams doing livery stuff the only one i thought that really looked good was the red bull livery really nice it'd be nice if they kept that for the rest of the year and the wheels just amazing so yeah really nice job by red bull all round and a difficult difficult early start but they got there in the end <clears throat> made it look really good and perez now for what it's worth secured p2 in the championship as well well, he should have. I mean, in that car, if he hadn't finished P2, you would have really thought they do need to change their second driver. So, uh, yeah, a good drive by Perez, but not as good as Max Verstappen or Charles Leclerc. Anyway, thanks to Jetcraft. Thanks to Pitbox.io. Thanks to you for watching. Be back with some live streams very soon. And of course, see you next weekend with the Abu Dhabi reports. Take care.